All right, everybody, welcome. Thanks for coming out this week. I just uh, got set up there to stream live on Facebook, and that's working. Uh, Penny asks if it's possible to see a list of all attendees, and I have not yet figured out a way to do that. Uh, so I am sorry about that. For me, I mean, I can see it right now. There's about, about 15 attendees, but uh, I don't know how <laughs> to show you that. Sorry, Penny. That's true, Penny. Yeah, it could be uh, if you say something nasty about like that Dave guy. That could be trouble. Okay, well, again, welcome. Uh, let's get right into the news here. So I was uh, I was away last week out to see my uh, my grandbaby. That was pretty darn nice. And catching up when I got back, I see that the R229 system update is still on hold. That's uh, too bad because that's supposed to stop this uh, kicking you out of admin all the time thing. So I'm in particular, I'm looking forward to that release, but that's still on hold. I did check the blog and there wasn't uh, anything additional there other than the Max recordings. If you haven't seen them yet, that might be worthwhile going to see Business Catalyst at Max and the recording, uh, Magda put up the recording there. Yeah, we definitely need that, Bill. Uh, hang on a sec, I got sound coming through my uh, headphones. Sitting on the side. All right, there's uh, no updates from the App Store this week, unfortunately. On the BC Guru side, we've uh, finally released that e-commerce template and the sale on it is extended. So today is your last day to download the e-commerce template for only two credits instead of three. Uh, I'm actually gonna use that today to, to show some of this e-commerce stuff. So you'll get a, a tempting little preview of it and maybe that'll entice you to, uh, to go pick it up. And finally, on the BC Academy side, we have some a new tutorial coming out, disabling user submitted web app items in two different ways. Something uh, Chad has prepared for us. And they have also extended their Cyber Monday promotion. So today is the last day to get $20 a month off of pro student membership. So pretty decent deal. $20 a month for as long as you remain a member is, uh, is a pretty decent deal. So maybe worth looking at. Okay, just a reminder on your chat, if you make sure you change your to setting to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see what you type. And uh, let me just share my screen and then we'll dig in. Okay, I'm just looking on my other monitor screen. Looks like you can see my screen there. So this was, uh, it's a little odd. We were gonna talk about A-B testing and then uh, I just, Mike got called out of the office this week on a couple of things and he was not gonna be able to attend today and, and he knows a bit, quite a bit more about A-B testing than I do. So we decided to defer that. And when we talked about what we could talk about today, it kind of came up uh, in conjunction with this e-commerce uh, template release and some of the things that I learned in building this template. And we thought, well, it's not a bad time to, uh, to maybe cover some of, the, some of the things we learned while building this template and uh, maybe cover some of the opportunities that are available for you. Uh, Mike says that he just reported a major bug in BC a couple of weeks back, data not being copied when you create a site copy. Okay. Uh, if you want to elaborate, Mike, if you want, the, if you want to just add it to the chat, that's good. I don't know anything about that. I say I was away last week, so I'm, I'm not aware of that. Hmm. I know some things like um, in the blog, the image doesn't get, uh, doesn't get copied. And there's something else in a blog that doesn't get copied. I think it's the SEO meta tags, but yeah, I was asking what kind of data too. So maybe you can elaborate. So on the screen is the, uh, we're calling it the Arrowware. This is our, our e-commerce template for BC Gurus. And in the process of building it, I definitely uh, learned some things that I didn't necessarily know about e-commerce. So I thought we'd uh, kind of run through the template a bit, show you some of the things that we learned and some of the plugins and tools that were used on it. Uh, Laura, I was talking about, uh, it's the Cyber Monday 
has been extended for the BC Academy membership. So it's $20 a month off of a pro membership. Uh, that's been extended. Today is the last day for that. So that's what I was talking about there. All right, so this is the Arrowware. Uh, just a bit of a trivia thing. This particular section, this, this men's collection, women's collection, just in clothing. And I wondered if anybody could tell me how I achieved that. And uh, what's, what's of note here is, is when you make this responsive, you'll see that this women's collection is above the picture here, but when you get down to a mobile size, that image now goes above and the women's collection goes below. And I wondered if anybody knew how I may have achieved that. Uh, it does use foundation, but probably not the what you think it is. Uh, Daniel, yeah, CSS grid would have been a, definitely a way to do it, but this is not grid done. Uh, we, have to be, we have to be cognizant of our, our community and the BC Guru sign, and we're, we weren't convinced that everybody's ready for CSS grid, so we continue to use the, uh, the float classes and foundation. Yeah. yeah. Order if using day grid. I'm not sure what you mean there. So it's uh, you think you think you could use push pull. So um, medium push, medium tw you know medium six push, medium medium six pull. Unfortunately, that doesn't work for entire sections. So because this in fact is is a is a full column width. Uh, you can't push and pull it. I could, I could move this whole section, including the image, left and right, but I can't swap this with the picture using push-pull classes. So no other guesses. It's, it's, a, it's a bit hacky, but in fact, there is another, another section here which has it the other way, and I'm using uh, hide for large, show, uh, show for large. So there's actually four sections here, and I, I, based on the screen width side, I just hide or show one. Now I'm, not, I'm telling you this because this is the only way I could achieve this particular layout, which seems to be fairly common in, in what people want these days. And that's really the only way I could do it with, with the float classes. So I wouldn't do that for uh, like a, a, a store layout or a shop layout or, or anything with a whole bunch of things. But because there's only three items in this layout, I thought that was uh, a reasonable way to do it. <laughs> yeah, James. So, no, it definitely was a bit hacky, and I, I kind of thought, well, I'll just, I'll just expose that. So when someone comes across it, if they buy this template and they come across and go WTF, now, now you know why. But it was much better to have that experience, to have that little bit of hackiness, than to have this text, this woman's shop now collection, above the image and just below this text. So I wound up with text and text. That didn't look good either. It didn't make sense. So I'm much happier with the, uh, with the results on a phone. And uh, if a little bit of hackiness is what it took to get there, then I'm, I'm relatively okay with that. So the next section uh, is this products and tabs. So I, I, I just use the built-in foundation tabs. And then in each tab I output, I use the uh, module products tab or tab products, tag products, I can't remember which. So there's a best sellers tag, there's a new tag, there's a top rated tag and a sale tag, and I just tossed them into, uh, into the tabs, which I thought was a, a pretty neat experience. I wouldn't do too many of these, and, and you would want to caution your, your client not to, you know, put pages and pages of items in here, trying to keep it, trying to keep it to four. Uh, I did test with five just to make sure it wrapped properly, but I, um, you know, that's, if there's only, if there's four in each tab, that's 12 products it's loading, 12 product images it's loading, et cetera. So, but uh, you know, again, not a bad way to, to create the layout here. Uh, so we have the, if it's on sale, it shows a nice little sale tag, that's all good. Um, what may not be obvious is this reviews, and this is an aggregate of the built-in commenting system, and I'll show you more on that in a bit later. But when you get to a product, uh, most, most people just turn it off and don't use it. But there's a, there's a commenting system associated with the, with the product, and I'm, I'm using that to collect the data. And then I'm just doing some liquid uh, gyrations to, to get my star output here based on an average of six reviews. This is, this is two and a half stars. So that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. 
I also have a nice little custom overlay here. And that's just using uh, Reveal, which is a, a built-in foundation app. And you can see the reviews make an appearance there as well. And this will add to favorites, which I'll cover in a minute. Nice little overlay when you, uh, when you hover over that to take you to the detail view. And you can add to cart directly from this. And that was a bit of work to get that to, uh, to work properly, particularly when you have something like a, like a hat that has attributes. So oh, I clicked it one too many times, sorry. Uh, Bill, to answer your, or Jane, to answer your question, that this section here, if you treat the, the image and the text as one block of, of, uh, of data, there's actually four blocks like that, and one of them is hidden in the middle here at any given time. So it is the text and the image. So yeah, when, I, when you have a product here with, a, with an attribute, you can, you can pick dark gray here and add to the cart. And I've intercepted that alert that you normally get and put up a nice one there. Uh, that's also a nice little thing you can do. Uh, it's real straightforward just to intercept that alert and put your own little custom alert there. It, uh, it's, it's a nicer experience than a, a default browser alert that pops up. Uh, what else do I have there? Reviews, okay. I have a, an off canvas cart here, and this was uh, pretty straightforward. I'll show you the source for this later. But it's uh, real nice, just slides in there, and you can change the quantities here if you want. You can drop something out of there if you want, and then just close it up and carry on. So I thought that was pretty cool. Maybe I'll add something back into the cart there. So you can see that little overlay, and it's just based on a, a timer. Now I happen to, uh, one of the things I had to do was after I show you that I've added that to the cart, to get things to update properly, I actually have to reload the page, and that's why. You, you saw the page, not jump, but uh, it looked like the page you loaded, it actually did. Ah, uh, Bill, not Bill, that, that is Bill, yeah. Let me see if I can put my finger on that real quick. Um, I don't, Bill, I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. I don't know that I can find it quick enough, but it, it is relatively straightforward. It's, it's a, about two or three lines of code. And uh, if we get into a chat here later, I'll, I'll try and go off and find that snippet and put it in the chat. Or if anybody wants it, if they just want to email me, um, that would be fine. Uh, Jerry, that's available on BC Gurus now, actually. bcgurus.com slash templates. So off canvas cart, and then this whole uh, favoriting thing. So a nice little heart there. And if you're not logged in, it makes you log in. And that's in a nice overlay. So that actually took me to my, uh, it took me to my, uh, my account area. Let's me go back to the home page here. And now you can see with that heart, you can tell whether it's been favorited or not. And if I want to favorite this now, if I just do that, it's done. So that's a, that's, once you're logged in, boy, that's a, that's a fast way to favorite and unfavorite something. I'm not sure if you knew you could do that. And here's another little photo grid and I'm using some of those same classes I used in the collections above. So when, when you get down, you see this hat here and this sweater here. So you get down to a certain size, look there and they go away. And then when you get a little bit smaller, the, the whole thing stacks. And it makes, it's a, it's a real visual site. It's, uh, it's meant to, to appeal to, you know, you got to pick your photography, but it's meant to appeal to, uh, to you very visually. So I'm pretty happy with that. And what else we got? Let me get down to the bottom here. This hot deals of the week that was pretty interesting. And that's just a straight plug-in. So I will provide some links to this in the resources, but it's called the final countdown. Uh, I liked it because it was real straightforward and, and simple to implement. There was not a lot of code. You know, literally it's, it's almost like that much code and it was real simple to put in place. And, 
I've actually got this information in a web app. So the, the client in the end just has to enter an end date and in, in, a, in a web app field, basically, and, uh, and they're away. So if I go to web apps, uh, countdown deal, So you can see they enter the date and then the time in the web app, and that's what controls the, the output here. So pretty easy to update. So James asks, when you get time, can you walk through the JS for the side cart? Not sure how you got the increment, decrement, and okay. I'll actually show you the source for that. And if, you, if you're a BC Academy member, it's a, it's a free, you just have to be a member, not a pro member. It's actually a free tutorial, and it'll give you all the code you need there too, James. So I'll show you where that comes from later. So yeah, this, this plugin, this, my point with this is there's a lot of plugins out there. Uh, I, I had to look at two or three before I found one that was, I thought was simple enough and that I could convert into this, uh, this web app interface. So real easy for my client to, uh, to enter the text here. Uh, right down to expired deal text. Sorry, this deal is expired. That'll actually show up there. Act fast, these deals expire soon. Act fast, these deals expire soon. Real simple for your client to update just through a nice, uh, a nice web app interface. All right, and I think that's about it for this page. We get to these uh, catalog view, and this is something I think gets overlooked in that you can have catalogs and then products below. Lots of folks I've seen uh, in their e-commerce sites, they only have catalogs and they don't include products below. You don't have to include all the products, but if you just include it in the root shop, it'll show up on this uh, on your overall page. And that's actually, to me, is a, uh, is a, a decent way of featuring products on your main shop page. So all you need to do is go to that individual product and add it to the root catalog. So I'm going to go to e-commerce and catalogs. So I have my fashion shop and then the, the four major ones. All you need to do, to do is add your product to this route like I have here. So you don't have to add them all. You could add your, your top three sellers or your top four sellers or whatever you want it to feature. It's a real fast and easy way to, uh, to feature products on your main shop page. So again, just an, an awareness of that. Another little used functionality that I tried to use here is this catalog introduction. And with some liquid you can, if it's not there, you don't show it obviously. But that's simply, if I go back to, under the more options, there's this description. So it's a, it's a nice way without having to dick around too much on the page you can have per catalog, have a nice description go, uh, go on, the, on the overall catalog page. And what else I got? Catalog intro, yeah, okay. So now when we get to the, uh, the product detail page, I found another plugin that I, that I quite like, and that is uh, Image Zoom. So you can see as I mouse over this image, I get a, I get a really nice, smooth zoom of that. Now, of course, you want to make sure you have a, a higher res image than I think I have here. Uh, I don't think I uploaded a, a bigger one here, but nice. I think that's a nice way to, for, to let a, an end customer have a look at that uh, picture. And I use this product called Drift Demo. And again, I liked it because it was relatively straightforward. The only challenge I had was to see how it wants to zoom over top of this area. It took, a, it took me just a little bit, maybe five, 10 minutes to figure out how to make it zoom over top of the action. It's over top of itself rather than over top of this area, which I thought looked odd, uh, particularly uh, on, a, on a mobile screen. So when you get down smaller, and if you pull this text off the side to the bottom, now if I was hovering over this and it was zooming down here, that would be kind of horrible, right? So I thought it should be, uh, I thought it should be this way. It's got another nice, uh, free to use, free to use uh, plugin. Relatively straightforward to implement. T 
ton of options if you want them, but at its simplest, you're, you're really just a, a few lines of code. We, we'll get you there. Uh, not sure how I got there. I think I must have clicked on something. Uh, Jack, those plugins are already in the template. Uh, and I mean, you can go, I'll give you the links again in the resources so that you can go and get them if you want to use them on, uh, on other sites. But I'm, I'm pointing them out so that you're aware that there's plugins out there that are free to use and, and provide some really nice functionality for your e-commerce customers. But yeah, definitely those, uh, those are already in the template. So if I look at the builder here and go to the JavaScript, you can see the drift image, zoom is there, the final countdown is there. And I've, I've, put, the, uh, I've, I've put the link to it at the very top of each plugin. So that's all there, the CSS for it is all there and it, uh, it already works. So if you're gonna use this template, that's great. If you wanna take those plugins and use them somewhere else, I'll provide some links in the resources. Uh, something else, this uh, plus minus is pretty cool. That wasn't too bad to implement. And that is a little bit of custom uh, JavaScript. So if you, know, if you happen to get this template, the, the code is there, you can certainly take it and, uh, and figure out how to use it on your other sites. Now you can, and you can still type six in there if you want, That's, that works fine, but it's not a bad way to provide it. It's a nice UI, I think anyway. And these thumbs, so we've, uh, we've done this for a few templates now, but it may not be obvious. So instead of the, the built-in business catalyst uh, thumbnail generator, which is table-based and, and kind of horrible, this is put in light gallery. And it's a, it's a real nice light box. So again, just a little bit of liquid to, uh, to get this to output the way you want it and, and can kind of control this so that they, they look nice and uniform. And then when you click them, you get the, you get the light box. And then the bottom here, we have these tabs again. So one of the issues with, uh, with products is you, you get a product detail here and often your customers want tabs at the bottom here and it's, it's not that simple to do uh, unless you use this little trick, which is basically to use a web app. So you have a additional product details web app. There's a couple ways you can go about this. So I chose, you can see here, I've got additional details, sizing information. You could add more tabs if you want, you just add another field. But I chose to take this, you take the value ID from the URL and then you go to uh, the given product And you go down to more options under custom and you enter that ID there. So then in the, uh, in the output for the page, it basically gets that number, goes and gets that web app item and outputs your additional details and your sizing info. And then the reviews, which I'll show you in a sec, uh, is just added on the end. So that's one way to do it. It's pretty straightforward, not too hard for clients to understand. Another way is to, it, it's, it's got its pluses and minuses, but you could take this product name, Athletic Cross Strap Top, and you could do a web app search basically of this web app that looked for the exact same name and then populated the details. Um, the issue with that is if, if you have more than 500 products, that can be, no, even that's not bad because you're using a web app search, but it is rather resource intensive. So you have to know how to write an Ajax web app search. You have to make sure that they name it exactly the same. You can run into challenges if your client likes to use apostrophes and, and uh, ampersands and those extra special characters. So the, the more solid or reliable way is to, is to use the numbers in the way that I did. But you certainly could just do an Ajax web app search for that name and, uh, and then based on that, I'll put the tabs in the bottom. Uh, Steven, no, this is not, we did not use Bootstrap for this at all. This is a foundation and it's got foundation builder ready to use. You don't have to use foundation builder to, to work with the template, but if you do own it already or you want to you wanna add it for this, uh, it comes already connected. You just have to uh, basically click a button to, to connect it up. 
if you don't want to do that, you can just go edit the styles. You can go edit the, the JavaScript and do whatever you want. You don't have to have Foundation Builder for it. We only did the one series of templates there that uh, in Bootstrap and Foundation. And based on the feedback we got, um, it's not, it's just not real economical to build it twice. Just looking at the questions in the chats. That's, uh, I think that's everything there. Yeah, plus 100 for foundation. You know, Bootstrap is, is all right too. I, I personally feel foundation is, uh, is in the lead, but there's lots of folks like Bootstrap as well. Um, because, you know, virtually everything we've done already on BC Gurus is foundation. We've, we've decided to stick with that. When we're building sites for Chicago Digital, we have a, a custom foundation uh, framework build that we use, and uh, that's fine for that. So that's where our experience is. All right, so then we get to this reviews. I promised I'd show you that. And this is this review form. And it's really just using this commenting engine to, uh, to allow you to enter a, a review. Let me see. Let me see if I can break this. Something always happens when you do it live, right? Okay, so it, uh, it did take it, so I can go back here now. Review, and of course it's not there because this is one of the reasons I like this. Uh, you have to go to the comments module and change it from pending to approved. Now you can change that. You can go to actions, uh, manage new comment rules, and you could say products. Um, you can, you can set it up. In fact, it looks like it's supposed to be. I'm not sure why it didn't automatically approve. Maybe it hasn't seen me before uh, with that particular email address. But after that, I should be able to add a comment, no problem. And now when I refresh this page, there's my review. And again, this star stuff shows up. And this that star is, uh, let me see if I can find something here that, Just to give you a little taste of what the, the code looks like for that. So I do this module rating feedback, throw that into a collection, make that a little bit bigger. And then just run a little liquid loop if there's actually items in there. And then based on that, I put out the stars and uh, it's looking, it's looking to see whether I put out a full star or a half star or an empty star is really what it boils down to. And then I've got a, a nice count and that's it. This is the code for putting out those stars. Not a lot. And it gives you a, a really nice effect here. That puts out that. Not too many people use this. Uh, you know, the comment modules, lots of folks aren't happy with them. I, I find it took a little bit to figure out how to work with them, but once I did, it's, uh, it's actually relatively straightforward and, and it works well for me. Let me just find one of these has uh, a bunch here. Just from testing. One review, one review, two reviews, six reviews. Who knew that the Glam platform heels were so attractive that they got all these reviews? Uh, James, I don't think you can. I don't think you can because you don't really have access to the form on the, on the add the review thing. So I don't think so. It'd be interesting to try though. So, you know, sp spam may be an issue, maybe not. So the one thing you want to watch, uh, particularly in, in the container like this is as you get more and more comments, you wanna make sure you handle the scroll effect here. So I handled it by putting a max height on and then putting overflow scroll. So you can see the overall ratings and if they wanna scroll through the other ones, uh, they can here. So that's just something to watch out for. Iris, yeah, you can, you can force the login. That's no problem. 
Now, in this case, I made, I made the, I believe I made, uh, yeah, interesting. I'll have to think about that. I, when I added that alert, I added it after this one. So it's obviously intercepting that one and then uh, reloading the page. Hmm. Still not bad. I just, any, in any case, I made those, these fields required is, is how I handle it. Uh, is it still open to spam? Sure, could be. And frankly, even if, uh, even if you force a login, it doesn't stop a spam bot from submitting the form behind the scenes. So maybe that's an issue. If you're, if you're getting spammed, it might be an issue. Don't know. If that's the case, maybe then you want to look at using Discuss or something. Uh, which sample are you talking about, Stephen? If it's, if it's last week's? I'm going to, uh, I, I had a problem with the recording. I've got to get the original from Mike. So when I got back from my vacation, I, uh, tried to, I tried to work with it to get it posted and I got an error opening it. So I have to wait for Mike to get back from being away for a couple of days to do the, give me the original again. And then I'll definitely be putting it on the site. Uh, Greg, really, the only web app I'm I'm using is is for this uh, these additional tabs on the bottom. So there's a web app here called Additional Product Details. That's the one I'm I'm using to get that tabbed interface at the bottom of your of your product detail view. That's these items here, and all I'm doing is getting the product ID. Sorry, the web app ID from my Additional Products item. So if I go here. And I get this value and then I'm putting that in custom one on the product. That's the, really the only web app that I'm using uh, in conjunction with the e-commerce products. All right, then we have this uh, recently viewed products, which is kind of cool. So you can see all these products that I visited are there. And uh, that is a widget available in BC Academy. Again, it's a free one and I'll show you where that is in a, in a bit. And let me just clear these cookies. It's, it's setting cookies. So you can see this recently viewed. So I'm just going to, oops, I guess I cleared all the cookies, which would have logged me out. So you can see here now I have featured products. So that widget is real cool. If you've been looking at products, it shows those. If you haven't looked at any yet, it just shows featured products. And those featured can be whatever tags you want. So now if I reload this page, and I'm looking at Glam Platform Heels. And let's say then I go to this travel bag. Now you can see my recently viewed is the Glam Platform Heels. Pretty cool plugin. Okay, Bill, yeah, reach out to me later for that, uh, that other code and I'll, I'll dig it up and send it to you, Bill. Uh, Steven, this week's today's, what I do is once the recording has to convert from Zoom out, and then that happens after the meeting here, in the morning, I do just some quick editing. I, I take a little bit off the front and I take a little bit off the end, throw a nice overlay on it, and then I get it posted up to YouTube. And then I get the link for that and I put it into the, uh, into the sample. So by tomorrow noonish, you should, uh, you should be able to get this, the full recording for today's sample. And as soon as Mike gets back, I'll, uh, I'll process the other one. I'm just clearing some of the questions here. Uh, Jack asks, if he was the store owner, could he see that someone has looked at this product and then put it on sale in their cart? Um, the short answer is maybe and when I get past this little review here, I'm going to show you some of the apps and stuff that are available, and that may answer your question. So let's uh, let's go for, let's go with that. I don't think I showed you where this count up is. Uh, this is counter up, and again, I'll provide these links in the resources. But this counter up is the one I used for. Oh, I haven't shown you that one yet. Sorry, that's why you haven't seen it. 
I'll, I'll get to that one in a minute. All right, so when we get to my account, I'm gonna have to log in. Because I cleared my cookies. No, I didn't toss my cookies, Penny. I cleared my cookies. All right. So on the My Account side, I got a nice favorite deals. So any of those items that I favorited show up here. If I want to get rid of one, I just uncheck it. And if I uh, reload the page, then that item will be gone. This uh, counter up, if you look at the bottom here, when I hit this, you see these numbers rolling up. It's, it, it can be a little cheesy, but it was easy to input. It kind of adds a little bit of a, of a visual UI. And that's this uh, counter up plugin I used. And again, it was not much to put it in place. It's, uh, it was really straightforward. And I just apply it. There's a web app here. Countdown, no, 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 no. Stats bar. So all they do is they enter their value here. And this counter up plugin will count up to that value. So think about how else you could use that. It doesn't have to be just these stats. It could be, you could count up the price. You could count up this price if you really wanted to, maybe on the detail page. I wouldn't do it on a, on a say, catalog page. But then what you're trying to do is draw somebody's eye to what you want them to see. So James asks, with all these plugins, do you just add them to one master JS file? Uh, in this case, because I'm using Foundation Builder, that's how they wind up. Uh, in the Foundation Builder itself, I tend to put them separate in case I want to turn them off. But when it, when it builds the final file, it puts them all into one file. If I was building this uh, on a non-Foundation Builder site, then I always have two. I have a, a I have an extras.js and a scripts.js. And the extras is where I put the plugin code and the scripts is where I put the code that makes those things run, if that makes sense. Does that answer your question? <laughs> so Jack says uh, the plugins are interesting. Maybe a, another sample on how how we go about finding them and installing them. Uh, finding them is straightforward. You, you figure out what you want to do and you, you use the great Google and say, I need a, a countdown plugin or I need a Zoom plugin. And then it's a matter of, of kind of, you get bitten a couple of times where you go and try and input something and you spend an hour or two and you can't get it working the way you want. And now you get frustrated and you go, uh, you go work with another one. And uh, then you get that one working. That's, that's how I find them. And then once we find them, we share them with our, within our team, much like I'm sharing with you now. And, uh, and that becomes kind of the de facto one that we go to use. All right, so that's that, that's that, that's all good. The other thing I wanted to show you here is this My Orders. So just with a little bit of customization, I've got, a I think, a really nice My Orders interface. So these are obviously some test orders. Uh, and this is a table layout, which is, in and of itself, fine. But when I click on view invoice, I can actually view the invoice. This is almost like it would show up on, uh, on my, in my customer's email. So that in and of itself is fine. And then even right down to the, the logo. And then with a pretty basic print style sheet and uh, liberal use of what is called uh, no print. So basically you, uh, in your print style sheet, you can see how this says no print as a class and no print, no print, no print. So doing that, I can say print this invoice and here's what my page looks like. Pretty nice. They can, they can print it, they can put it out to a PDF, they can do whatever they want. So uh, I thought I would share that with you because that's, that's pretty cool and pretty common request I think for an e-commerce site. So that's a print style sheet where you basically say, I only want to see this stuff, you know, the, the main content in the print. And, uh, and then a button there that basically says print. I think the code behind this is pretty straightforward.
No, sorry, I must have it in the, in the scripts file. But the code in itself is, is like one or two lines. It's not that, uh, not that complicated. So I was pretty happy with that. It's, uh, you can do it from the back end, but to allow someone to come here and print their own orders is, is actually pretty cool. Uh, I have worked on another site where they can actually process a refund from this page. Uh, and that was a bit of work too, but we, uh, we managed to get that working. So it, it basically kicks off an email and says, hey, I would like to return this, these items. It looks at their order and it, it lets them choose uh, this one, this one, and this one. It generates an email to the back end uh, to the admin that says, hey, I want to return these. Can you send me a, an authorization code? And uh, that works pretty slick. Okay, and then after that, it's, it's edit my login details and, and log out. So you could, of course, build that out more, but uh, not a bad, not a bad e-commerce experience, I think. All right, so I covered that, I covered that, the Zoomer, the deals, the cart app. All right. So again, I'll, I'll provide these links in the resources. Uh, this is the recently viewed product widget and it's free. So if you're a BC Academy member, you don't have to be a pro member, you just have to be a member. And uh, you can get this recently viewed products widget. So that's that one when I was on this page and I saw these recently viewed at the bottom. So you can A, you can watch the tutorial, shows you how to install it, and then B, gives you all the download code for it. So pretty cool. I forgot to mention this automatic discount widget. Also, uh, also a free tutorial and widget. And it basically allows you to send an email with, a, with a, a, a link in it, and it's question mark discount equal, and you put the code on the end, and when they hit the cart, it automatically, I'm not sure I can get to that point. Yeah, so you do that. Bear with me. Yeah, sorry, I won't bother. In any case, you, you, you send the link out via email with a question mark discount equals whatever the code is at the end. And when, and when they hit the, the shopping cart, that discount is automatically applied to their cart. So it's a great way for valued customers or you know, repeat customers or however you want to reward that. You can send them out these, uh, these emails with these specific links and say, hey, get 10% off your purchase this week. And uh, as long as your discount code is valid, when they hit the cart, it automatically applies that code. They don't have to remember what it is. They don't have to enter it. So that's a pretty cool thing. And again, that's free. The, uh, the video is free and the, and the widget's free. Off Canvas cart summary, also free. And uh, was it Bill or James? I can't remember. You were looking for how to install it. It's all here. You can watch the video for how it works. You can see this looks almost identical other than I've changed some of the colors. Uh, Scott does a great job of showing you how to... Uh, how to, how to install it, how to get it working. And then here's all the code. So pretty, pretty good stuff for free really. And all you have to be is a member and uh, to sign up to BC Academy is a new charge. Sure, you got, if you want access to the pro tutorials, you gotta pay, but uh, pretty cool. And if you go to the e-commerce section, just you know, free and, and pro, they're both in here, but there's tons of videos here on BC Academy on how to enhance your e-commerce experience. And that's why we're, we're trying to bring some of those into the BC Gurus products, just to make sure that they're, they're available to you, they have an awareness that they're there, and uh, specifically these free ones. It's a great way to, to give you some exposure to it and you don't have to bother installing it, it's already installed there. Also, uh, Business Catalyst, if you, or sorry, BC Gurus, if you go to Tutorials and in the dropdown you choose e-commerce, also tons of uh, tutorials here. Some great ones that Daniel Telfer did on the shopping cart, uh, customer notification emails, login and registration, product detail layout. There's, there's just all kinds of tutorials available, again, for BC Guru's mem members. 
Uh, don't you forget that you can have alternate shopping cart layouts. This is uh, Jerkylinks, that's a Chicago digital site, and this is uh, just a custom cart. It's all the same components, but it, it, you're not, with Liquid especially, you're not limited to how you can lay it out. You can lay it out to what makes sense for your design and what makes sense for your customer. I just wanna make sure I pointed that out. Uh, that's fine. Now, Business Catalyst, I have, don't have any experience with these. I'm hoping somebody here maybe has. Under the Platinum Plan, they now have this product recommendations and abandoned cart. Uh, and I have yet to work with that myself. So I wondered if anybody in the, uh, in the audience has worked with it yet. And uh, here's the, the documentation for product recommendations. So the code in and of itself is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of documentation here, but it looks relatively easy to, uh, to put in place. I think the challenge is you have to have a minimum number of orders of 100 in order for this to start working. So that might be the one downside. Uh, thanks for your feedback there, Greg. If I don't know if you just put that in or if that was there before. All right, so BC Academy, BC Gurus, even, even Business Catalyst itself is, uh, is focusing more on making it a nice experience for e-commerce customers. And just over on the App Store, just an awareness so that you know there are apps here. Most of them, well, in fact, all of them you have to pay for, but if you haven't looked in a while, there, there are some new apps for e-commerce here. This card assistant is a one-time $15.75 US, allows you to put a message in the cart and allows you to redirect the cart. So for the cost of like 16 bucks, you, can, uh, you have some control over the cart. The cart assistant pro is $15 a month, but allows you to do much more. So there's a cart monitor, cart hero, cart message, cart redirect, cart identifier. And uh, we had the, the folks from EFX there a couple, three weeks ago talking about this, uh, this app, but it's, it's pretty powerful stuff. Solid gift vouchers. I actually did this one. It allows, uh, it gives you a nice interface if you're using gift vouchers. It gives you a nice consolidated way to manage those gift vouchers in the back end. Uh, there is a free version and a pro version. The difference is in the pro version, you can export all your gift vouchers to a CSV. And that's really the only difference. Uh, I think that one was just open. Uh, product view. So this is for stock viewing from, uh, from Pretty. And that is one time $40 per site. So if you're managing stock, this gives you a, a nicer interface to do that with. Boy, I was getting pretty willy-nilly with tags here, tabs open. Uh, dynamic price, so this is easy BC. Dynamic price change when attributes with a cost are selected, hide attribute cost from a user, and show the total price of a product calculated with quantity instead of the sell price for a single item. So if you're using attributes, one time $10 basically. And uh, they also have attributes plus, which allows you some manipulation of attributes. So just, I, my point is don't forget that there are some apps out there that can help you with your e-commerce sites. I'm just looking at my notes. And finally, I don't have much, anything prepared on it, but uh, don't forget that there's an affiliate program that's built right into BC. I have yet to actually use it all the way. I've kind of poked around on it a bit, but I think it's pretty interesting. So in, in the end, you set up somebody as an affiliate, you send them a link, they send it out to their customers, and if that customer then clicks that link, comes to your site and buys a product, then that affiliate gets, uh, gets a given percentage of that product. So not a bad way to, to boost your sales and, and promote your sales through other people, uh, the power of leverage. Is anybody out there using or has used affiliates? Don't see anybody typing. Looks like that might be a, 
I know. So that's what I had to share on e-commerce. Does anybody else have, uh, have something they'd like to bring forward and let, and let folks know about? I don't know why you can't see me. Hey, I don't know why uh, my camera's not working there, so I'll just put this back up again. <laughs> so Barbara asks, uh, have I ever integrated Canada Post shipping and Business Catalyst? Are you asking me that, Barbara, because you know I'm from Canada? That would be my question. Uh, I have not, not directly, not directly Canada Post. I kind of did on a site, I was an American site, they were considering using Canada Post. That was about three years ago. And I'm not sure if that integration is still in place. Let me uh, log into that one off screen here and see if it's in place and working. Mostly so I can remember what the heck I did there. All right, e-commerce, shipping. No go. Oh, that's, sorry, that's, uh, no, they never went through with it. So we were playing with, uh, with one site that wanted to do cross-border stuff. Um, let me just try another one. Talk amongst yourselves, as they say. This site I know has a Canadian presence, so I'm just checking that. That said, I haven't looked at it in a while. All right, so yes, uh, I have a Canadian site, Barbara, and uh, they are still using Canada Post for shipping. Um, they are Canadian based, so I'm not sure if that makes a difference. So they're, they're based, like their primary shipping is Canada, and then they set up another domain for the US and they use FedEx and UPS down in the States. Uh, and in fact, I see a US Canada Post actually, so. The short answer is uh, yes, it looks like it's possible and works fine. These guys, I haven't done anything on their site for about a year, year and a half. So they've been running that long with uh, any problems that I'm aware of. Thanks for your feedback, Jerry. Does that answer your question, Barbara, or does that just generate more questions? I don't recall in this site, I don't recall it being that hard. I think it might have came to me set up, frankly. But, uh, hmm. I just don't recall it being that hard. Now, it does say user defined. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm not sure this is uh, integrated in, in quite the way you're thinking, Barbara. So I, I think you're saying like with FedEx where it'll actually, it'll actually bring back the, uh, the cost of the shipping based on the, the size of the, and weight of the product. Is that the kind of integration you're talking about? Because that is not the case here. They're just picking a number basically based on what they know about what they're shipping and applying that. Yeah, sorry, Barbara, that, that is not the case. This is not integrated in that way. 
So then I, again, the short answer is uh, no, I have not done that uh, in, the, in the way you're describing. Anybody else have some questions that I can't answer? <laughs> Sorry about that, Barbara. Oh. Anybody see anything I showed today that they would uh, consider using on their own e-commerce product project? Huh? Jack has provided a uh, an affiliate example. Oh, sorry, that's from Dave, not from, that's to Jack. Yeah, thanks, Greg. That was, uh, it's a bit rigid, the comments module, but it's it was flexible enough for me to get the look on, uh, on this page. And I think, it's, I think it's decent enough. The alternative is to build a reviews web app. Uh, and frankly, Daniel has a nice, in the app store, which I have uh, installed on a site actually. And it works real slick. So that is. So Daniel's got a really nice review app, which is relatively easy to install and much more flexible. So something to consider if you, if, if you don't, you or your client doesn't mind, you know, a $30 one-time charge, um, really nice interface you can go look at it at your at your leisure so you got a rating bar you have a nicely styled form you can style a list view he's done a super nice job on it so worth mentioning and from the back end you can uh, you can filter you can search you can enable disable you can delete them hide and show pretty cool so you have everything. Uh, you have everything from bootstrap, uh, and by bootstrap I mean you reach down to your shoes and pull your straps and do it yourself, or you can install uh, Daniel's version for thirty bucks. Oh, you're welcome, Daniel. That's uh, that's a super tool. Looking at my notes here to see if I may have missed anything. I think I pretty much got it all there. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll boil down those links and include like a PDF with all the links in a, in a document and the resources, and of course I'll uh, create this recording and uh, get a hold of the other one and get them both posted there so you can rewatch it at your leisure if uh, if you miss something. And after that, we'll see you next week, I guess. So if there's no other questions, I'll just uh, shut her down now and say thanks very much. Uh, thanks, Jack. I appreciate that. It was, uh, I apologize for it took, taking a little bit longer to get there, but, you know, we wanted to make sure it was super nice. You know, I've got a couple of minutes here. I'll just poke around a bit more. You know, nice uh, grid-based blog layout. That Instagram widget was we just love. From Elf site, some nice pagination, a little bit of a zoom effect on the uh, on the blog post images. As long as you don't, <laughs> there you go. Nice slide up effect on the designers here, and uh, if they don't, you know with. There's lot, there's liquid logic in here, so if they don't have a LinkedIn profile, it doesn't show their uh, doesn't show their icon. Little things like that. Nice testimonial slider. This uh, opening hours and stuff is uh, in content holders and wherever possible. We've we've made it real easy for your clients to update. Uh, this may not be obvious. I will say we updated the uh, the gallery. So if you remember the, the gallery from the last few templates, this is a, a bit of an upgrade. So you can see when you hover, you get the, you get the nice little text at the bottom there. We made it a, a nicer looking grid, more, a, little more, a little bit more modern than what it's been in the past. And still when you open it up, you get the nice uh, light gallery light box. 
And I think there's a tall one in here somewhere. Doesn't, and with this light gallery, it doesn't matter what, uh, what shape you wind up with. I think it's on the next page. Maybe it's this guy. Yeah, you see how that one's tall? Still fits. Elephant still fits. Who knew the flamingo was taller than the elephant? Anyway, nice, uh, some nice updates on this template too, even from some of the standard pages. So that's it. Thanks a lot for your attendance and for your patience. And we will see you next time.